Okay. Uh, this is the mechanics for the CA. You need uh, two point three and uh, two point four. Two point three is projectile motion. It was explained last week. Uh, just to make sure that I can open the. Uh yeah, two point three and two point four. Uh, last week was projectile motion two point three. We're gonna solve the quiz, of course, but uh, also I want to explain two point four very easy. Uh, just know it's called relative position and relative velocity. Basically, the vector is the position vector, right? The ve uh, the position vector with plane respect to ground is equal to plane respect to water. Plus water, sorry, with plane respect to ground is equal to plane respect to wind plus wind respect to ground. It's like a vector, okay? <clears throat> Where am I when you used to add, uh, like, let me say, AB plus BC plus CD, what would this be equal to? AD. You always take the first and last point. So here's like, it's the same thing. If you want to split up PG, it can be equal to R with P, and then G would be the last one plus another R, but G would be the last letter. And then the one in between them would just be the other one you have. If they said wind, it would just be W. If they said car, you just put C. You get what I mean? So always, but that's, that's just how it works. Okay? Uh, and then obviously, if you have this for the position, then it's going to be the same thing for the velocity. V P G is equal to V P W plus W G. The W in between, what do you take? You only take the first letter and the last letter. It's going to be P G. Okay. And then any here there are some notes. You know, obviously A B is equal to the negative B A. Or oh, same thing here. This is like, I know it's just solving exercises. Um, uh, C P B here is P A plus A B. So we just did it like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, this was a grid. Again, guys, please solve the grids all. Please, please, they're very important. Uh, okay, this is important. The closest approach, okay? What's the aim of the closest approach? What's the whole point? The aim is to find the minimum distance between two bodies moving relative to each other. So let's say in time, like a car moving like here, going like this. You have, I don't know, maybe a motorcycle. Uh, fake. And another uh, fake. Oh, no. Okay, excuse my drawing. Uh, but the motor motorcycle is moving like this. You want to find how much distance is the minimum distance between these two objects. Okay, so we're going to split it up step by step. And these steps you need to memorize. Okay. How will she? These here. R small a, R big a. R small b, R big b. They both mean position, right? Okay. When you say small, it always means at the origin. Time t. Wait, does not equal zero. Yeah, never mind, never mind. This is a t does not equal zero. I don't know why it's written like that. Okay. So when you say small letter R a R b, this is just the way we saw it. Other teachers might have explained it differently. But this is the way our teacher solved. It's you see t does not equal zero. Okay, this is R A R B. So it's basically the position of A and B at any time. However, when you say capital A capital B, it's the position with respect to an observer. Basically, the position with respect to the origin. Okay, with respect to the origin, kind of like the initial position. Then you have with for velocity the letters don't matter. V A is the same as V capital A that we don't care. Okay, uh, so here's the formula. You need to know. I will see. The first thing they derived <coughs> is this. Uh, you know that x equals vt plus x node, right? This is pretty much the same thing. The, the final position is equal to the velocity times the time plus the initial position, right? Final position equals initial position plus velocity times time. Very, very easy. That's not the formula you need to know. So basically, what the closest appro closest approach is, when you have the velocity of an object moving like this, its position should be oh, should, 
when you have the velocity moving like this, its position should be moving like this, and they should be perpendicular. Okay, they they have to be perpendicular, and uh, that's just how it works. So since the position and the velocity is perpendicular, that means the position times the velocity equal to zero. This is from chapter one mechanics. When two vectors are perpendicular, then uh, when you multiply them uh, using dot product, you get zero. Okay, so that means RAB is perpendicular to VAB. That means RAB times VAB is equal to zero. And where RAB is RA minus RB, obviously. And where VAB is VA minus SVB. And R capital AB is RA minus RB. So we get this derived formula that RAB equal, small, R small AB is equal to RAB plus VABT. So this, the smallest distance, closest appro approach is equal to RAB capital, you need initial positions, initial pos this, these are initial positions, the initial positions plus the velocities times time, okay, so let me solve this exercise here, we solve it, but just so you can help understand it, because, and I didn't really understand un until I solved the question, okay, so, in this question, they said we started at 12 p.m., uh, they gave you that the initial position is uh, for a is 3i with respect to the origin by the way a and b denote objects okay like let's let's say they said motorcycle and car then like motorcycle would be a car would be b okay so they said uh, the position of the first object is 3i with respect to the origin and they said the position of the second object is 2i minus j with respect to the origin then they said va is 5i minus 5j vb is 8i minus 6j so they obviously asked us to find the closest distance between them so we're going to use the closest approach and in the closest approach you need to write this okay you just have to write this if you ever get this in a written part you need to say that rab is perpendicular to vab that means rab times vab is equal to zero you have to write this okay and what's our formula the closest distance between the two objects is equal to rab plus vab times t okay we know RAB is equal to RA minus RB. Sah. There you go. VAB is VA minus VB. Sah. Okay. Now, what do we do? We do substitution. RA, 3I. Take to 3I. Minus RB. So, minus 2I plus J. Why minus 2I plus J? You, you distribute the minus. Minus 2I plus J. Okay. Done. Plus VA minus VB. VA, 5I minus 5J. Take uh, Minus VB. Minus here becomes minus 8i plus 6j okay and you have the t outside don't forget simplify you get 1i plus 1j minus 3i plus 1j you get this okay now this was for also from chapter one vectors when you have this t here what did we used to do now we'd combine the i's 1i took to the home and no, you, you take the one down and you have minus 3i times t so what do you do and i, I I like to take the i out I keep it separate. This would be 1 minus 3 t. 1 minus 3 t i. You can like, listen, you can just, you can just distribute it now. This, it would be like 1 i minus 3 i t. Right? If you do it like this, plus 1 j plus 1 j t. So now I'm just trying to save time a lot. So this one, you can factor i out, you'll get 1 minus 3t i. This one, you can take j out, it's going to be 1 plus t j. And this is how I got this, but I, I usually skip this step. You, you can be fast with it. Uh, so you get this. And we know this is now, what, what did we find? Our a, b, this is the closest distance. But is this a number? No, it's not. So what do we need to know? Now you use the dot product is equal to zero. Okay, true. We found this is RAB. We know that VAB is minus 3i uh, plus 1j. We found it here. What do we know about RAB and VAB? They are perpendicular. So means their product is equal 
to zero right okay so yani obviously you know for the dot products you multiply the x's with each other plus the y's with each other okay so what are my x's 1 minus 3t and minus 3 right so 1 minus 3t times minus 3 plus the product of the y's 1 plus t times 1 what should this be equal to zero because they're perpendicular so you're going to get 1 times minus 3 minus 3 minus 3t times minus 3 is plus 9t plus 1 times 1 is 1 1 times t is t you're going to get 10t equals uh, 10t yeah you're going to get this you're going to get t equals 0 0.2 hours why is it hours because i'm up here i was solving kilometer per hour okay so it's 0 0.2 hours so when do they meet they meet at 12 12 p.m because 0 0.2 hours is 12 minutes we started at 12 p.m so 12 plus 0 plus 12 minutes 12 12 p.m okay and then now we know that the time is 0 0.2 hours so can i actually go back to r a b and substitute yes i can this was r a b i substitute 0 0.2 and you're gonna get this is r a b and obviously you can't keep it as a vector you need to find its distance actual distance so you found the magnitude it's going to be around 1.3 kilometers. Okay, that's how you do closest approach. And let's do the quiz. Okay, question one. Uh, which can be the variation of the y? Okay, you have a projectile. What can be the y component of velocity with time? You know that the y component <coughs> in projectile motion we have dx and vy. dx is always constant, but for vy it accelerates with an acceleration of minus g equals minus 9.8. Okay, so it's accelerating at a negative rate, so obviously it's going to be going down. Okay, this came copy paste in the exam last week. And then here, what can be the variation of the x component of velocity with time? It's always constant. Okay, it's positive value. Which of the following can be the acceleration of the projectile? The acceleration, we said it's minus 9.8, it's constant, so it stays down here. Okay, question two. Here, Question two, during a fireworks display, they said that the rocket is launched with an initial speed of 18. So V node is 18 meter per second. It reaches the highest point after 1.6 seconds. So the time to reach maximum height is 1.6 seconds. And uh, neglect air resistance, G is 9.8. They want the angle with the horizontal. Okay, the time to reach the maximum height is V node sine theta over G. Or is it G or 2G? Have it here. Uh, total is 2 uh, this is G okay so this is the V node sine theta over G we know what V node is it's 18 theta we're trying to find they want what angle with the horizontal they want theta so theta over G equals total as the time to reach the height 1.6 please don't confuse this with total time they said to reach the highest point so this is the time to reach the highest point this isn't the total time at time uh, this said G is 9.8. If I go back, 18 sine theta over 9.8 equals 1.6. This is a simple math equation, guys. Uh, 1.6 times <coughs> 9.8, then divided by 18. Then you do shift sign. You get 60.5, so 61 degrees. Okay. A ball is fired at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. So here it's 60 degrees. Theta is equal to 60. Okay. So we say theta, 60 degrees. From the rooftop of a 40 meter high building. So this is 40 meters. Up here. Just remember, we're, fired, we're firing it from here. Huh? The ball's initial speed is 30. V naught is equal to 30. How long does it take the ball to reach the ground? Time total equal to 2 v naught sine theta over g i think right but here you can't use this because this these time formulas are just to go up and back down to your initial position so it's not accounting for this over here so instead of using that well you can use this but you're gonna have to use two formulas if you use this instead of using this I know how much distance I'm traveling, right? No, my final position, you always know you start at zero. If you go up, you come down, 
your final position is minus 40. So y is equal to minus 40, your final one. What is y equal to? Minus half gt squared plus v naught sine theta t. So minus 40 is equal to minus half times 9.8 times t squared plus v naught sine theta t, so 30 sine 60. So you can put this in your calculator. You're gonna get, we want to like do it as a quadratic. Minus half times, you can take this here, okay? Minus half times 9.8 is minus 4.9 t squared plus 30, so let's keep this 30 sine 60. T, this becomes plus 40. Equals zero, and then you put it on your calculator. You get minus 4.9. Uh, 30 sine 60 and then you have 14 6.5 seconds and obviously the negative time is rejected question 4 okay you have oh my god okay so I don't want you to get confused at all uh, it looks a bit confusing but it's really really easy so they gave you the boat one has 8 meters per second t minus 9,000 and uh, that's its i component so this is the velocity times time plus x for the i and its j component is again velocity 2 times t plus 2,000 and then r2 is minus 10 t for the i component and its j component is 10 t minus 2,000 what is the velocity of boat 2 relative to boat 1 so you know v21 is equal to v2 minus v1 what is v2 we have the i component and we have the j component right the i component v2 minus v1 okay v2 is i components minus 10 v1 is my i component is 8 so minus 10 minus 8 uh, v2 minus v1 and then yeah the j components now v2 its j component is 10 right v1 is j component is 2 so 10 minus i was this 10 minus 2 so you're gonna get minus 18 i plus 8 j and then we want to know the boats meet after how many seconds of motion okay for part b i don't know it took me too long to solve but i just found out when the boats meet after how many seconds the boats meet that means their position vectors are equal so, obviously, the i components are equal and the j components are equal, right? Okay, so let's equate them. The i component here is 8t minus 9000. It should be equal to minus 10t. And you're going to get 2t equals 9000. Hold on. 12t equals 9000. I got 2. 8 plus 10 is. Shoe 12. <sighs> 18 t. 18 t equals 9,000. And when you divide 9,000 by 18, 500. You can also equate the j components if you would like. 2 t plus 2,000 equals 10 t minus 2,000. You're going to get. Uh, minus 8t equals minus 4,000, which is 500 seconds. Okay, let me clean this up a bit. Now they say the coordinates of the meeting point are what? Okay, uh, you can just substitute. Now we know that the time is 500. You can just substitute 500 into either R1 or R2. I'll just do both. You're going to get 8t minus 9,000, so 8 times 500 minus 9,000, it's going to be minus 5,000, here also, minus 10t, so minus 10 times 500, that's going to be minus 5,000, so the x component, we found it's minus 5,000, check on both sides, it should be equal, on the y component, it should be 2 times 500, plus 2,000, which is equivalently 3,000, and here, 10, 
times 500 minus 2000 is equal to 3000 very easy what a closest approach what a uh, uh, distance between the two uh, nothing nothing two cyclists each traveling at five meters per second from the same star to point and the cyclists move along few trajectories the angle between them is 30 degrees the relative speed of motion of the cyclists to one the seventh place is what okay so for this one the way i did it okay the angle between them is 30 degrees so what i did give or take i cut it in half x and y axis so I keep now it's 15 here 15 here okay so I have this vector 5 I need to resolve it into an I and the J right how do I get the I component 5 cosine 15 how do I get the Y component 5 sine 15 صح? okay hello how about this one it's negative 15 degrees right because it's going down. So how do I get the I component? Next is 5 cosine minus 15. Or J component. 5 sine negative 15. They want the relative speed of the motion. Is it a bit like relative? Yeah, you subtract this one by this one or the other way around. Okay. So you're going to get the relative is 5 cosine 15. Let's put this like this. Minus 5 cosine. Minus 15. That's I. Uh, plus 5. This one time. Okay. 5 sine 15. Uh, minus 5 sine. Minus 15. J. So you're going to get, let's just put this on my calculator, 5 cosine 15 minus 5 cosine minus 15, 0. So this is 0i. Then 5 sine 15 minus 5 sine minus 15. What was the answer? 2.5. They sent to one decimal place. So plus 2.6 j. Now, how do you find the speed? You take the magnitude. I keep 0 squared plus 2.6 squared. This is just 0. This square cancel with the radical. You're going to get 2.6. Don't believe me. You can try it on your calculator. So you get 2.6. Then for part B, they say at, 10, at t equals 10 seconds, how much is the distance? Distance v times t. So the relative. Between them, you need 2.6 times 10 is 26. Okay. Uh, question 6. A boy kicks a ball vertically upward with an initial speed of 12. So we know it's 12. Uh, express numerical answers. Okay, take g equals 10. Express the velocity of the ball in terms of time t. Okay. Obviously, v equals i don't know why we have this we see Allah. v is obviously equal to acceleration times time plus v naught right uh acceleration is, is since it's kicking upward you know acceleration is equal to negative g right so minus 10 times the t they're saying an expression in terms of t sub t plus v naught is 12. determine the time it takes the ball to reach its maximum height you should know at the maximum height v equals 0 so minus 10 t plus 12 at the maximum height is equal to 0 you're going to get t is equal to 1.2 express the position in terms of time t you know the position in this case we call the position y equal to minus half g t squared we say v naught sine theta t but since we don't have we're not working with projectiles, we just say v naught t. Okay? Type. So it's minus half times 10 times t squared plus 12t. So it's going to be minus 5t squared plus 12t. Determine to one decimal place times t and t prime, which the ball is at a height of 6.2. So what do we do? 
we equate this to 6.2. If you put this in a calculator, how do you put it? Move everything to one side. Take your calculator. Minus 5. Well, minus 6.2. You get 1.6. 0 0.8 to one decimal place. Question 7. A projectile is launched at 20 meters per second. Original projectile motion. So it's launched at 20 meters per second for V naught is 20. Uh, how many questions in this quiz? Let me see if I can finish before I go to school. Here. So V naught is 20 at an angle of 53, so theta is 53. G is 10, okay. <clears throat> they want an exponent expression for x and y. Okay, you know, in projectile motion, x is equal to v naught cosine theta t. Okay, so v naught cosine theta is just going to be uh, 20 cosine 53 t. Uh, and they want it as a square. Okay, okay there's no squared. There's not, like, we don't have anything squared, so we put, oh, what's 20 cosine 53? 20 cosine 53 12, okay. For, this is 12 T. So, obviously, it's just going to be 12 times, so, the, the, the coefficient of T will be 12. We, won't, we don't have any coefficient of T squared, so, obviously, there, we're not going to put anything, it's going to be 0. And there's no coefficient, there's no constant term, so it's going to be 0. Okay, then y, you know y is equal to minus half gt squared plus v node sine theta t is going to be minus half times 10 times t squared plus v node sine theta, so 20 sine 53 t. You're going to get minus 5 t squared. 20 sine 53 and I'm not going to know. 16. So 16 t. So minus 5 coefficient is a coefficient of t squared is minus 5. Coefficient of t is 16. Well, t is my energy constant, so zero. The time the projectile remains airborne. Okay. So. Uh, well, yeah. Total time is equal to v node sine theta by 2 v node sine theta over g so it's going to be 2 times uh, 16 over 10 which is 3.2 well why do you use 16 yeah hey, man you want to do 20 sine 50 okay but i it's like it's right here bro it's, it's right here okay uh the range of the projectile is how much the range is equal to v naught square v naught squared sine squared no no sine two theta sorry over d so it's going to be v naught squared so 20 squared sine 2 times 53 over g g is uh, 10 so you're going to get you should get around 38 20 squared times sine 53 times 2 over 10. So it's going to be how much? 38, right? Yep. Question 8. A river flows due north with a speed of 1.2 meters per second. A man rolls a boat across the river. The river is 1,000 meters wide. But let me kind of like, this is north, 1.2 meter per second. Uh, a man rows a boat across the river. Okay, across the river, so he's going like this. Okay. Uh, the man decides to row the boat with a velocity of 2.4 due east. Uh, how far north of his starting point will the man be when he reaches the opposite bank? Choose the correct answer. So. Again, this one confused me a lot. The man decides to row 
2.4 due east. So he's moving 2.4 to the east, right? Uh, how far north of his starting point will the man be when he reaches the opposite bank? So he's moving east, right? We need to know how much, when, like how much, how, how north will he be when he reaches the opposite bank? We're going north with the speed of 1.2. So I need to multiply this by how much time it took me. And to find the time, let's all she know how much time it, like we need to find the time, right? We know we're going, this is a thousand meters wide. The river is a thousand meters wide. So we're moving at this, at a speed of 2.4. And our final distance should be 1000. So obviously, you know, x is equal to vt. So velocity times the time is equal to the distance traveled by the mass, right? So you're going to get 1000 divided by 2.4. You're going to get 416.6. Okay. Type. How far north? Now we just do 1.2 times our answer. Times 1.2, you get 500. Okay. I'm a bit confused on why we didn't do relative relative, but uh, I guess yeah okay. Oh, why did I delete? Anyway, in which direction relative to east should the robot be headed in order to reach a point directly east from the starting point? So we need to know the angle. Okay, look. Here's here's how it goes. Now our motion is 2.4 due east, so 2.4 i, plus how much j going north 1.2 j. So if you want to represent this on a vector, let's say it's like this. We're going 2.4 and 1.2 j. One point two J. So how would you represent this? It would be something like this. We need to know how much is this angle. Right? Five. How do you find this? The sine, okay, you have actually you have opposite and you have adjacent. So you can do shift tan. Tan theta is opposite or actually no y over x. So you just do shift tan y over x, so shift turn, 1.2 over 2.4, I think you get 30, hmm, hello, okay, uh, I was trying to solve this part B, but I can't figure it out, uh, I asked ChatGPT. Uh, you can you can take this answer if you want. I don't know why they use shift sign and not tan. Uh, but <clears throat> I guess any anyway, okay. Uh, if uh, anyone could explain it in the comments, uh, thank you. I'll ask my physics teacher today, my mechanics teacher. Uh, other than that, I do not know at all. Wallah. A shell is dropped uh, from a bomber moving horizontally. Okay, see, well, it's like, well, relative motion is hard. Projectile motion for me, it's, it's easy. It's just formulas. Okay, a shell is dropped from a bomber moving horizontally at 100 meters per second uh, at an altitude of 405 above the ground. So when it drops, the final position is 405. What is the horizontal speed of the shell after it has been dropped two seconds? Okay, always know that Vx is always equal to V node uh, x, which is equal to V node cosine theta. It's going to be equal to 100 cosine 0, which is 100. The vertical speed of the shell two seconds after it has been dropped. Okay, Vy at any instance is minus gt plus V node sine theta. So it's going to be minus 10 times t, which is two seconds, plus V node sine theta. It's going to be sine 0, so we just write there. Okay, because sine 0 is 0. So minus 20. Uh, the time it takes for the shell to reach the ground. Okay. Since theta is 0, if you want to find time, you have to use this equation. Because we know how much distance we're traveling, the y. Uh, and uh, theta is 0, so you can just cancel out. 
So you're going to put minus 405 equal to minus half times 10 times t squared. So you're going to get minus 5t squared equals minus 405. So you're going to get t squared is equal to 81. So t is 9. Uh, okay, a boat is trying to cross a river uh, in which, yeah, a boat is trying to cross a river in which the water is flowing eastward at 3 meters per second. The boat is moving relative to the water, so the boat relative to the water is 10 meters per second. Do you know it? Our sheet is determining the magnitude of the boat's velocity with respect to the shore since we're talking about magnitude let's use vectors okay <clears throat> so here we have the boat relative to the water is 10 due north so it's going to be j right because it's going up and the water the velocity of the water with obviously respect to the shore is equal to three meters per second this is going to be i right Okay, they want the magnitude of the boat's velocity with respect to the shore. But on V, B, S. How do you do it? Remember when we have these, we always put the first letter here and the last letter here. Now, what's the third one we have? Obviously, we're talking about water. We can substitute <coughs> boat with respect to the water, is 10J. Water with respect to shore is 3I. So it's going to be 3i plus 10j. What's the magnitude of this? Let's put it in our calculator. Radical 10 squared. 10 squared plus 3 squared. You get 109, which is 10.4. Okay? Determine the direction of the boat's velocity with respect to the shore. So you want theta. So I'm assuming you do shift 10, 10 over 3. Okay, yeah, you always do shift tan y over x. But I don't know, the last question was, I don't know how they got, uh, let's, yeah, uh, this one, not this one, question 8. I don't know how they got 30 here, I really don't. Uh, <clears throat> study the motion of a shell shot by a cannon. Okay, a 5 kilogram shell leaves a cannon with the speed of this, at the angle of this. Okay, V node, theta. Neglect the effect friction. What is the range? Range is equal to V naught squared sine uh, squared theta. No, no, range. Range is sine 2 theta over G. So it's going to be 550 squared sine 60 equals 2 times 30 over G. And then. Uh, 550 squared sine 60 over 10 26196 the cannon the cannon fires another shell with initial speed v node at the same initial angle it takes three seconds to hit the ground 0 0.4 meters below its point of projection determine v node okay so it's the same theta they just change v node okay so they gave us 0 0.4 meters below the ground. So y is equal to minus 0 0.4. Okay. Time is 3. Theta is 30. We can just find v naught. Whenever you have y, you use this equation. Okay. So minus 0 0.4 is equal to minus half. G is 10 t squared is 3 squared plus v node sine 30 v node sine theta t huh? <coughs> so times 3 i should put times 3 over here okay so you can get minus uh, 5 times 45 plus 3 V node sine 30 is equal to 
2 and minus 0 0.4 3 times sine 30 is 1.5 uh, so it's going to be 1.5 V node minus 45 equals minus 0 0.4. 1.5, I'll say, take minus 45 to the other side and get 1.5 V node equals uh, 44.6. You can get V node equals 44.6 over 1.5. So I think this is wrong. I definitely did something wrong. Oh no, it's correct. Oh, wow. Okay, I guess that works. Okay, determine the maximum height reached by the shell. Okay, now maximum height is V node squared sine squared theta over 2G. So it's going to be 550 squared uh, sine 30 squared over 2 times 10. You're going to get 550 squared sine 30 squared over 20. <coughs> Whoa, V naught squared sine 30 squared. Whoa, what did I do? Oh, no, 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 sure. V naught is not. What? V naught is 29.7. We just found it. Uh, 29.7 you get 11 meters okay do you think we can finish before 7 a.m. I doubt to Allah yes, yalla. this question here came copy paste last week same numbers uh, a projectile is launched at an angle 10 alpha is 5 over 8 speed of speed node 17 g is 10 la, 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 la. the range range is equal to v node squared sine 2 theta over g what is theta equal to tan theta equals 5 over 8 so theta is equal to shift tan <coughs> 5 over 8 so shift tan thirty two degrees so you're gonna get v naught squared 17 squared sine 2 times 32 over 10 17 squared Sine 64 over 10. So 26. The maximum height. V naught squared sine squared theta over 2G. So it's going to be 17 squared sine 32 squared over 20. I need to see 20. I need to see Uh, sign of the squared, I know. Is uh, squared sine 32. Okay, four. Question 13. I'm gonna try and finish fast. Car A is moving with velocity this. Car says car B, who's this? Find the velocity of B relative to A. B relative to A, yani B minus A. Yani minus 10, minus 14. Mi sorry, minus 10, minus minus 14. Is four. 4 minus minus 6 is 10. Very easy. Just subtract them. Okay. The speed of car relative is car A relative to B now. So they try to trick you. I don't know why. But uh, <coughs> so they want VAB. VAB is equal to V minus VBA. Okay. It's just the opposite of this. So it's equal to minus 4i minus 10j. They want the speed. So what do you do? You take the magnitude. To find the magnitude of it, you obviously need to find the vector first. That's why. That's why I did this. You would get the same answer, but yeah, you just make sure you know your stuff. Okay? 4 squared, 10 squared. Radical. 4 squared plus 10 squared. You get 10.8. Always when they ask for speed, you find your magnitude. Okay? Okay, a body of mass 5 is thrown upwards, so theta is 90. When you're throwing something vertically upwards, it's 90. V node is 20. G is 9.8. The highest point that the body reaches. Highest point. H is equal to V node squared sine squared theta over 2G. So it's going to be 
uh, v naught squared, so 20 squared sine theta, yani 90 squared over 2g, so 20, so uh, 9.8, uh, 2 times 9.8, 20.4. The time to reach the time to reach maximum height is uh, v naught sine theta over g. So it's going to be uh, v naught sine theta over g, so 20 sine 90, which is just 1. I'm not going to write it over g 9.8. You're going to get 2.04. So 2 seconds. 2 one decimal places 2 seconds. Uh, <clears throat> the time it takes the body to reach half the maximum height. So to reach half of 20.4 is 10.2. To reach 10.2, you do y equals minus half gt squared plus v naught sine theta t, right? Okay, so minus half gt squared is going to be minus 4.9 t squared. v naught sine theta, it's going to be 20 sine 90, which is just 20 t equals, what's the y? We're trying to reach 10.2. We obviously want to solve the quadratic, so we take it here. It's going to be minus 10.2. We're going to go equation mode. Minus 4.9. 20 minus 10.2 you're gonna get uh, for the first time so you take the less value the smaller value 0 0.6 seconds okay okay canon question so easy canon is projected at 200 meters per second so we know 200 that is 10 g is 10 the greatest height maximum height is equal to v naught squared sine squared theta over 2g so it's going to be equal to Uh, v naught squared, so 200 squared, sine 10 squared over 20, 60 meters. Okay, cannon hits the target 12 meters above the ground. What's the time it takes to strike the target? So we need to reach y equals 12, right? Type, what is y equal to? Minus half gt squared plus v naught sine theta t. So it's going to be minus 5 t squared plus v naught sine theta it's 200 sine 10 200 sine 10 t should be equal to how many meters 12 meters so you take 12 over here and you solve the quadratic so mode 5 3 minus 5 200 sine 10 and minus 12 6.58 seconds so should be 6.6 yeah uh second answer they're saying <clears throat> the second answer whom they're saying the time it takes to strike the target after launch the target if you look at the diagram it's over here so they, they want the second time okay so you don't take 0 0.36 take 6.6 .6. The horizontal distance between it and the target, it took 6.6 .6 seconds. How do you find it? X is equal to V naught cosine theta T. So it's going to be 200 cosine 10 times 6.6. Times .6. So you go back 200 cosine 10 times 6.6. .6. You get this. Uh, Yeah, you get this? Uh, so the horizontal distance is to one decimal place in kilometers, it's going to be 1.3 kilometers, which should be another answer. Yes. Okay, question 16. Okay, what is projected? Again, same thing. V node 25, theta 37. Okay, la 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 la. The speed at the highest point is what? At the highest point, V is equal to Vx which is equal to v naught cosine theta. Memorize this, okay? So, this is, this is at the highest point, you only have vx. So, you're going to have v naught cosine theta, so 25 cosine 37. 19.96, so the nearest integer is 20. The greatest speed attained by the ball. Always know, v max is all, always equal to v naught, okay? Or vf. One of them. And v naught is 25, so it's just 25. That's that's how you do. 
then they want the trajectory of the ball. Y, and there's no time, the time independent. It's equal to minus G over 2 B naught squared cosine squared theta. Uh, T as the X squared plus 10 theta X. Okay, so substitute minus G is 10, so minus 10 over 2 V naught squared, so 25 squared cosine squared theta cosine theta squared, so 37 squared. How much is it? Minus 0 0.0125. Then tan theta, so tan 37, 0 0.75. Okay, question 17. Okay, uh, they want you to know the graphs. Obviously, in projectile motion, the acceleration is constant. Acceleration is time. The horizontal, what else is constant? Okay. This is negative, huh? The negative constant one is acceleration because it's negative 9.8. The horizontal velocity is obviously stays constant, but it's positive. Then the vertical velocity, so like look, A is obviously negative. Vx is always constant. But Vy, you know, it's accelerating in the negative sense, so it's going down. And then the speed versus time. Why is it speed? Because speed is Vx and Vy together, okay? And it's curved because it does change. Because the x isn't changing, but the y is changing, so it just it, it curves. Okay. Memorize this. Okay. Don't get mixed up between this and displacement, uh, speed versus displacement. No. Okay. A body of mass fifty kilos is dropped. Okay. Moving one hundred from a helicopter. Okay. And then y final is minus hundred twenty. The time it takes to reach the ground. Okay. We don't have a theta, so if you want to find time, we need this. Actually, no, we don't have theta at zero. And, you know, if you want to find theta when you when you want to find time and your theta is zero, you use always this equation. So you're gonna get y minus hundred twenty because you're dropping it down. Okay, equals minus half times g ten times t squared plus v naught sine theta t. So v naught theta zero. Uh, so this all is just going to be cancelled. So you're going to get minus uh, 1 over 2t squared. Okay, you're going to get minus 5t squared equals minus 120. You solve this, you're going to get 4.9. Okay. How does the distance traveled by the box before it reaches the ground and the horizontal distance traveled by the airplane compare? Okay. So enter you're dropping it from a helicopter. It's over a helicopter, right? Whatever. Okay, you drop the box, it's going down. You're both moving at the same initial speed, 100, okay? Since you dropped it horizontally, it's going to move like this, or both the helicopter and this, the box are going to move like this. So that's why the distance is the same, okay? Since you're dropping it horizontally. The speed with which the box reaches the ground. Okay, so we need to know V at the ground. When, when it hits the ground, you're going to have Vx and Vy. Vy when it hits the ground is equal to V, uh, it's equal to minus GT plus V node cosine theta, shoot V node cosine, V node sine theta, and Vx is equal to V node cosine theta. Rule. Okay, minus GT, so minus 10 times the time 4.9, equals minus 49. This is equal to V naught cosine theta 100, cosine theta 0, which is 100. You want the speed, so what do you find? The magnitude, so 100 squared plus 49 squared, you should get 111. 100 squared plus 49. And I'm trying to go a bit fast, so, because I'm going to school. <laughs> it's 6 in the morning, man. What am I doing with my life? Allah. Okay. The speed of the airplane relative to air is 300 meters per second. So V, uh, let's say plane, air, is equal to 300. And the wind blows at 50 in the perpendicular direction. So it goes like this. Perpendicular. Okay. Select the diagram that shows the direction in which the airplane moves relative to the ground. Okay. Okay. It's going to be like the one going up because this is greater than this. So it's going to be like this. Something like you. Know, part A is pretty easy. Self-explanatory. Okay. Okay. For part B, they want the resultant speed. 
okay you would think it's you do vpa mind you no no it's perpendicular direction so you don't do this okay velocity of the plane we're gonna call it 300 i because it's kind of like going to the right velocity of the wind is going down so minus 50 j so the resultant is gonna be 300 i minus 50 j right because the v they want plane relative to air vpa uh, after you add the wind here like you you have the plane moving at 300 to the right so it's 300 i you have the wind moving at minus 50 down okay so it's gonna be 300 i because it's moving to the right minus 50 j you can't just do 300 minus 50 get 250 that's, that's wrong guys you can't because they're moving in different directions but it's going to be different influence so your resultant plane relative to wind and like when they say relative to air they kind of mean wind okay so vpw it's 300 i minus 50 j since you want the speed what do you do you find the magnitude so radical 300 squared plus 50 uh, squared you get this so 304 okay then for the last question uh you have a swimmer moving two meters per second perpendicularly to the bank of the river she's trying to cross it the width of the river is 250 speed of the current is 0 0.6 okay the time it takes a swimmer to cross the river is how much she is moving at two meters per second the distance she has to cross is 250 how much time does it take any guys come on x is equal to vt okay the distance is 250 the velocity is 2. How do you find the time? Divide by 2, 125. The distance the swimmer crosses as she crosses the river. Okay. What is, uh, what is the velocity? It's vt, right? So, now when we were doing the closest, the closest approach, or something like this, we did that rab is equal to rab plus v a b t this one right r a b they didn't give us initial positions so we're just going to cancel this so the distance is going to be v a b what's v a b it's v a minus v b t v a is the swimmer two and she's going up so it's j v b is 0 0.6 going to the right right so 0 0.6 i so minus 0.6 i times the time 125 right so this is going to be obviously we put the i first times 125 okay so you're going to get 125 i think this is how you do it just let me make sure yeah it is so 125 times hold on 125 times 0 0.6 you get 75 so it's gonna be minus 75 i 125 times 2 is 250 j we want the distance so obviously this is the position vector if you want to find the distance you have to do uh, the magnitude so what you do radical 75 squared plus 250 squared you get this 261 okay so if you want in simple terms without kulhal equations or tafis okay it's equal to v times t right the velocity in this case relative to each other since we think swimmer across the river you know like the distance it, it's not 250 because she's going under the influence of 0 0.6 okay it's going to be the relative velocity so 2 minus 0 2 2 j minus 0 0.6 actually does it work 1.4 times 125 no it doesn't okay yeah so it's going to be 2j minus 0 0.6i times the time 125 and obviously you substitute then you find the magnitude that's it for this video i managed to finish i'm gonna go to school now thank you so much for watching and good luck